Okay, this is the walk-in greenhouse that I bought from Wilkinson. I use it two years for growing uh, cucumbers and uh, uh, some tomatoes. It had a design for automatic, semi-automatic irrigation. The pipe going through the ground and then going all around in a U-shape and irrigating the beds that I created here. But now I'm going to change this design to build a hotbed here. I cannot grow seedlings anymore in the house. It gets too damp and uh, smelly and uh, it affects our health. So I'm just going to build a hotbed here using uh, material available. Then uh, when the heat is produced, fill it of course with the horse manure and whatever material that I have available. It will be about uh, yeah, one meter by one and a half meter. And fill it with the horse manure and uh, any compostable material. Then when the heat is produced, I put my seedlings over there in modules and other things. And uh, covering it completely with uh, plastic. There is enough light here as you see. So hopefully that will be our growing area. That will be used for having seedlings for the whole allotment and in the polytunnel. This is just a walking greenhouse. And uh, yeah, this is what is going to be done. Okay, uh, now the ground is gradually getting ready for the putting the frame of the hotspot. This is the irrigation system that I put here. This is a pipe joined by tape, duct tape, together. And the pipe has uh, drilled holes at the bottom of it. Uh, so the water which was poured into the source uh, would be distributed. Uh -huh. As you see, it is now going to be removed and probably used somewhere else. Okay, now the ground is prepared um, and uh, when this is done, I will put up the structure for a hotspot. Okay, now I've covered the ground with the tarpaulin. So there will be a surface that the weeds cannot grow through it, hopefully. Nothing can stop bindweed anyway, don't believe it. Uh, I'm hoping that anyway, most of the weeds will be suppressed and whatever I can see comes through, I will remove it by hand. Now I go for the next stage which is to put up the structure. Hotbed is now finished, making the structure in less than two hours. It's amazing. Uh, I joined the corners of the hotbed uh, with wire because uh, I'm not sure if it will be a permanent structure. I, I will see how it, how it is doing. If it is good enough and it works, I will just keep it. Uh, but really, I don't need to do screw or anything because this is contained practically. Just join them just in the case if they collapse inward until I put the horse manure before that. So, hotbed finished. It's beautiful. And I'm happy that, uh, yeah, on the Christmas Eve I finished the hotbed. It was really growing on me. I thought that, oh, I'd never finish. But when I started it, just less than two hours. It's done. Amazing. I'm now waiting for the delivery of the horse manure and until then I will just uh, keep it empty. Because if I fill it now with, hot, uh, with the horse manure, uh, it will start to produce heat. At the moment, I don't need that. But that means that it will finish being a hotbed producing heat before March. That's, that's the time that actually I need a hotbed 
to grow things before, uh, in the case of frost and other things, that cold weather, of course, is, is hanging around February, March, even in, into April, sometimes in May. So I really need that to do a little bit in the new year, uh, getting the horse manure, putting it there, and see how it will do. Merry Christmas. Okay, now I'm going to line up the interior of the hot bed with this plastic sheet material. So the manure will be contained here. It will exclude the light. Also, I need this polytunnel to be clean. This greenhouse plastic material. I don't want to make it dirty or cause it to rot. So there will be a wall between them. This air here will be a good isolate, isolator. And uh, yeah, that means that uh, the heat will not be lost easily. So when I line it up, also the manure will be contained within this. And I'm not going to do with this plastic material, quite thick. Okay, now I have lined up inside the hotbed with this plastic sheeting. And it, it will exclude the light, keeps the heat here, and also keeps the membrane of the greenhouse clean. As much as possible, humanly possible. Now the membrane from outside, as you see, is applied, keeping the inside warm and insulated. In this way, without needing any electric or paying for anything, I just provide with organic heat source, source of heat for growing my seedlings in the winter. That is amazing, I like that. That's a good design. If you like, you can do the same. Hotbeds, how to grow early crops using an age-old technique by Jack First. I was in London because of my job, uh, I have to travel to different parts of London. And uh, during the break I went to a bookshop and uh, yeah, I found this book. And uh, very interesting, it inspired me actually, inspired me to build my own hotbed. Uh, hotbed. The book is a small, quite a small. It's about uh, yeah, 128 pages. The price tag for such a small book is a bit steep. Nine pound 95 pence. It's published by Green Books, which publishes a lot of books on the gardening. Jack first also has been introduced in this. The book deals with the Principles of uh, heat production by the manure. How to capture this heat, and how you to use it in, in your in your garden or allotment. It has chap uh, ten chapters with resources and index also. And I read some of them if you like. Hotbeds are nothing new. Hotbeds. How hotbeds work. The advantage of hotbeds. Preparing the hotbed, creating the hotbed, planning and sowing, what to grow, and varieties, management of your hotbeds, case studies, further possibilities. What was a uh, what I found interesting is that it talks about the uh, the size of the hotbed you you need. For example, if you build a big hotbed, the heat production takes uh, last longer than a small one. So if you, for example, want to build a hot bird with a hot bed which is a small and you build it in January by the February the whole heat is finished you don't have any heat and at the time that you actually need the heat most so the timing is also very important in this so this book really gives you good ideas about the sizes 
of the hotbed and how long that will last. So for example, if you have a hot, uh, very small hotbed, don't start later than February, late February probably even. And the sizes are mentioned, bed dimensions, for example, here you see that. And this will affect the growth of your seedlings. The problem is that many greenhouses that we have also in allotment, we don't have electric in allotment. Greenhouses don't have electric, or if they have, it's costly to heat them. The best way is to grow them indoors if you can. But uh, they may grow leggy if you grow them in a windowsill, or you have to use a lot of electricity. Hotbeds give you the heat source, makes your greenhouse or allotment or polytunnel a heated greenhouse or polytunnel. And it helps, really improves the growth of the seedlings, especially when in Britain when we want to uh, start the growing season early enough that in May we can put a lot of crops, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, plants outside ready to to catch the best of the spring so this book really helps you to build a hotbed i have such a thing in my allotment i don't have i don't want to grow the my seedlings anymore in the home because they get really leggy and also here it makes the atmosphere damp and moist and it's really not good for health and so i grow them in the old uh, walking in greenhouse, plastic greenhouse that I bought from the Wilkinson. Uh, four pound is the usual price for it, but I bought it 25 pounds. It was an I, use it for, I use it for growing cucumbers and uh, um, tomatoes, but now I have a polyton for that, so I know I, I'll use this one now for, uh, and I, I showed that I built a hotbed inside that. It captures, it keeps the heat well. Then, uh, when it is uh, full of the horse manure, I will put the trays of the seed, seedlings uh, inside that and cover it with a sheet of plastic. That will provide a very good warm environment for my seedlings to grow uh, for early growth. And then I will have my seedlings already prepared for planting outside when the time comes. As I told, the book is small, it's a bit pricey, but uh, yeah, why not? If you want a book that is different, this is the one. How many books we have about a lot in gardening and gardening and all these things? And uh, only one book about this. There were in the olden times some more books than this, but uh, that's it. Now, this is a modern summary of whatever we know about hot pets. Small book, but very good, and actually rare. I recommend this book.